you went from nerd to <laughs> badass. <laughs> In the moment when you're growing through that growth stages, you don't you don't realize like what you're doing. You're just like this sucks, but I gotta get I gotta push through these moments. When you have no money and like you're you're trying to do this thing, it's not fun. Yeah, you know, it it's twenty four seven of just and pure agony, mm -hmm. honestly. I mean, because you're investing every dollar that you can back into your company and equipment. When you start a business, you're working, you're now working for everybody instead of just working for one boss or one company. You're, you're working for everybody. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. You know, like I'm still, still going through it for sure. Like getting a little choked up just thinking yeah. about it, but Welcome to the Colorado Springs Business Podcast, where we discuss business principles and provide real life insight into the lives of everyday business owners and entrepreneurs. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe or leave a review wherever you might be listening. Now, let's talk business. Welcome back. Today, we have a very special guest today, one of our really good friends for Andrew and me. We have Brian Rosmanith with Ignite Experiences. What's up, brother? Hey, how you guys doing? So honored to be back on here for the third time. Three? Now. Yeah, this yeah. is my third time now, so this is... <laughs> Really cool. It's awesome to see how the studio has changed and just how you've evolved as business owners and just as a podcast and, and just people in general. It's awesome to do life together with, with such good hearted guys that are, are really pushing themselves to the next level on everything they do. Well, you're looking really good, especially in your button up right now. You're looking like you've been working out since the second time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've been hitting the gym a little bit more <laughs> and uh, it's just very imp important. Uh, personal fitness and, and wellness has been a very important the last probably five or six months or so I just kind of realized how out of shape I was getting and I was just getting very out of breath setting up at events and just things that I could normally do easier were getting more difficult so it's like I, I got to get back in shape get back into the gym and and become you know who I want to be yeah. you also uh did a little it's been different the company's different since the last time you've been on yeah yeah a complete, little bit about that <laughs> complete yeah. rebrand so started out in june of 2018 coming up on five years now from when i first made uh, my very first dollar in axe throwing nice. at a different five festival years. <laughs> yeah so it's, it's crazy it's flown by man like i can't believe it's been almost five years since i i started my first business and went down that that crazy road and adventure and just the scary tosses and turns and and things that you go through as a business owner mm -hmm. uh, i think you you can't experience that unless you're actually in it and you just don't know what it's like until you're actually in the deep water and running your business and and figuring things out there's mm -hmm. just such a huge learning curve with that and things that you learn that you never thought was possible and obstacles that you get to overcome and things that you learn about yourself that you thought you couldn't do certain things and all of a sudden you're you're closing deals you're you know you're doing your business you're hiring employees and training and like doing all these things that there there's not a map for it so it's it's just been to really fun and did a rebrand a year and a half ago now in january of 2022 to ignite experiences so we focus on axe throwing is still one of our, our big popular items but our inventory was just growing a lot and it didn't make sense to be an axe throwing company anymore because we have 10 15 other different rentals that we do as well that are pretty popular and, and very fun with corporate events and they're all just engaging activities that you can do at events and then also some uplighting some decor some different things that make corporate events all that much better nice and uh, the team the team you've had the team i said that like three times <laughs> for uh, uh you've had people on your team for a while now uh that yeah. have stuck around i've noticed yeah very grateful for everybody that's kind of stuck with it and we we definitely had a little dip here and there uh last year as as we we're changing things around and people didn't think that we were throwing axes anymore so it's taken a little bit kind of took a little dive last year to get get back up but now things are picking up and getting a lot bigger rentals and, and mm -hmm. bigger corporate functions yeah. which is very good so able to support uh, more warehouse staff and just labor to be able to get things done that we need to so it's definitely turning around and and definitely seeing a, a good increase so very thankful for the team and i just i can't believe that they've stuck stuck with me all this time and i just so thankful for them and everything that they do in the company 
Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors who make this show possible. Our first sponsor is Recon Marketing. They can help with growing your business through SEO, through social media marketing strategies, and will work closely with you to help you develop successful marketing strategies for your business. Visit ReconMarketingServices.com and schedule an appointment with them today. Our next sponsor is Planet Duct. Planet Duct is the number one air duct cleaning service in Southern Colorado. You probably don't think about what's lurking in your air ducts. You may have even noticed the effects of poor indoor air quality, worsening allergies, respiratory issues, or a musty smell when your HVAC system kicks in. This is exactly what Planet Duct helps with. So reach out to Planet Duct by going to planetduct.com and schedule your next duct cleaning. Our next sponsor is the People's Tiny House Festival. The People's Tiny House Festival is back in Loveland, Colorado, happening July 1st and 2nd at the Ranch Events Complex. The People's Tiny House Festival expos all facets of simple living, including tiny houses, converted bands, converted school buses, container homes, and more. So get your tickets now by visiting peoplestinyhousefestival.com. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, one of them, uh, Jameson specifically, he's he's an awesome guy. Uh, he's got a... Uh, uh, a tattoo of an axe on his hand, right? <laughs> he does, yeah. So he got a axe throwing a tattoo on him, and he is such a good worker. I mean, mm-hmm. hats off to good person to too. Jameson and, and mm-hmm. just everything that he he's done. He's started with me in, in the very beginning, and just love supporting him, love giving him you know every event that's that's possible that comes our way. And he is just like Mister Axe Throwing Guy. Like he's he's now probably better at setting up the axe throwing cage than than I am and just way faster and more efficient and just a, a very solid character. Yeah, T- tell us about how that's evolved. Like how long did it take to set up when you first started to, to now with Jameson being super efficient and like working with the team to get it done? Mm-hmm. For sure, so when I first started, my very first bigger corporate event was February of 2019. That was a learning experience because I had no idea what I was doing as far as building the actual cage. There was no roadmap or or printout that I could, you know, download a PDF document and like, this is how you build an axe throwing cage. It it didn't exist. I mean, Mm -hmm. axe throwing wasn't a thing. It was brand new too. Yeah, it was was brand new. So there were were a few companies that had probably about five to 10 locations that were inside of a warehouse, kind of a bar atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And you could kind of base it off of their builds, but again, you don't, you don't know like what they did to put put in it in it and you don't know how the contractors actually built mm-hmm. the thing unless you built it yourself yeah and so there's such a huge learning curve and and with it being mobile it's a totally different ball game because mm-hmm. you can't have all the the metal and steel backdrops and the heavy rubber mats to protect the the floors and the axes so you kind of just have to figure it out mm-hmm. so that that build was rough it took about Five, I think seven hours for the full setup. So it was a uh, event in Vail, Ritz Carlton, Bachelor Gulch for about 250 people. It was a big <laughs> lumberjack themed event. So we have a lot of those, which is really fun. So you got like s'mores, you got all the lumberjack attire, nice. flannel all over the place. You have flannel, <clears throat> you know, d- design and decor and, and backdrops. And then and the axe throwing was a part of that like a theme party yeah, yeah. just a, a total lumberjack theme party mm-hmm. and then you have f- flannel backdrops and you're wearing flannel and it's just a really fun time to be able to come together with your friends and colleagues and throw some axes listen to some music and, and party like a lumberjack so is that, that a was, service you still offer mm-hmm. nice. yeah absolutely so axe throwing is is still one of our number one rentals that goes out pretty frequently Mm -hmm. and then just have more to offer as well nice so we're basically just a full service entertainment company with with about 15 to 20 different rental options that they can choose from and then sometimes three to four will go out at the same time or sometimes just one and how long did you say it took the first time yeah so seven hours seven freaking hours yeah seven (laughs) hours of setup i mean i didn't have any carts i I didn't have the money for it right because i just i built everything for comparison how long does it take now 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a big learning curve. We went <clears throat> into the, the back of the loading dots. Like I'd never been into a loading dock in my life before. I was like, what's a loading dock? Mm. <laughs> when, when <laughs> they emailed it over, I'm like, <laughs> it, I just, I didn't know, like, how does, how does equipment get from the back of a hotel into the ballroom? Yeah. Like it's a question that most people don't have that answer to. And so I didn't, I didn't know what a loading dock was either. And so they're explaining to me what it was. And there's just a huge <laughs> learning curve on that. So I, I rented a Penske truck for the event, 
loaded everything up from our storage units at the time and I had to build everything from scratch. So about two weeks f before the event, I was building everything outside of the storage unit and mm -hmm. finally got everything ready. Then we loaded up, went to the events and got there, realized that there's there's no carts for you know vendors that are at the event. So you, ca you need to bring your own Damn. cart. So I learned that one. I'm like, there's like no carts available. So I ended up st stealing a cart for the, the night <laughs> from another company that was there. So they, they were doing all the tables and chairs you for the event. It. Yeah, so I, I borrowed, I borrowed the <laughs> without permission. Cart. <laughs> no, I, I asked him. <laughs> yep. So I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't have a cart. Like, I got a lot of stuff to get in here uh, for tomorrow's event. Yeah, yeah. Would, would I be able to borrow this cart for the the night? And they're like, sure, man. Like, take it. So we ended up having this cart, and it's not a cart that you want to use because yeah. we we had two by fours, like framed out sections that were ten feet tall by five feet wide and totally not the cart for it. So we were pushing <laughs> it, like holding it in between and it was falling over <laughs> every which way. So we were just doing one panel at a time. Mm. We got it into the elevator and it was just back and forth, back and forth. There's about 12, 13 panels that we had to do. So we got had to take that That's an into, hour right there, into the <laughs> elevator and then up through the kitchen and all the kitchen <laughs> staff is like yelling at you because you're in the way and I got this big cart that's not supposed to be in that specific area <laughs> transporting all this all this stuff in there and then you get to the actual event and you have all this stuff like everywhere everything's very disorganized and I just kind of started building it how how I knew how yeah that's awesome so man. I had one guy <laughs> with me at, at the time we're still pretty good friends nice. uh, he was picking up some shifts with me and so just very thankful for everybody that's been around me the last five years i mean i i couldn't do it without them mm. if if i was by myself it'd probably take you know 12 15 hours and that just wouldn't sure. even be possible with the event mm -hmm. let's talk about some of these businesses that you do these events for because i'm not sure mm -hmm. if you can you know mention their name but like these are not small businesses that no. you throw these corporate events these are like what fortune 500 companies fortune 100 1,000 companies, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've done events for Ford, McDonald's, Domino's, Arby's. Walmart's, Arby's. Yeah, it had a big... I was there for that one. He, Andrew was. Yeah, it was, Ar it was the Arby's World Franchise yeah. a conference. There was just 1,000 Arby's owners in one spot. Yep. <laughs> what a, so what every, a life. <laughs> every Arby's owner in the franchise was invited to go to this, and it was at Gaylord Rockies. We had a four-target Axe throwing set up a, a pretty typical mm -hmm. rental for about a thousand people. It might have even been a lumberjack one too, if I, I, I maybe it was. Yeah. Yep, yep. So they had the lumberjacks on stilts there, kind of running around, yeah. practicing throwing the axe, <laughs> and then you have all the catering, the decor, the tables and chairs and bars and lighting, up lighting, and then a lot of times you'll have entertainment companies like a, either a DJ or a band playing during the event mm -hmm. so Wirewood I mean, station has been there when, when, we were, yeah, when we were there before <laughs> Wirewood station they're a very popular band so they're on the front range <clears throat> yeah. mm -hmm. front range lawn uh so that's at gaylord rockies one of their big event centers so it's truly an honor to be a part of those events and there's there's tons of companies that are involved in them you know all sorts yeah. of different event companies entertainment decor design there's a lot of moving parts in these events because you can't just have a thousand people at a big conference center with nothing to do, mm -hmm. right? You, you need to entertain them and make them feel welcome and, and really celebrate their success is what it's for. Because mm -hmm. they worked all year long for, you know, this corporation and made made everybody, you know, a ton of money. They built their teams and it's just a, a time to come together with your team and celebrate all you've accomplished. Because if you've hired say 500 people in the last year and you, you don't even know their their name they're just a directory inside of a computer database that you access once a year mm -hmm. and that that's all that person is to you when you're when you're a company of 3,000 4,000 employees you know that's a common occurrence with yeah. a lot of these companies they don't even know their name mm -hmm. and so this op this gives them the opportunity to come together as a team and actually put a face to that name. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully after doing one of our experiences or coming to uh, some of the events that we help put on that they get to really know them as a person and like, what's their family situation like? What, where do they live? You know, do they have a dog? Do they have siblings? 
What is what does that look like? And you kind of form those deeper connections, which are very important in business. Because mm-hmm. if you know someone on a personal level, you're actually able to communicate what what they enjoy doing and hopefully get tasks done in a faster way. Mm-hmm. Build respect too around. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Because if you're the the owner, or the the big boss, and you never socialize with your employees, I mean, your employees are not going to respect you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's important for you to lay your hair down, right? That's mm-hmm. that's very important. And there's something to be said. Like some of my best memories, even with my company, has been the company parties and getting to know people on a deeper level and connecting with them. Because there's something to be said when you take business out of there mm-hmm. and you just get to have fun with each other, right? It, like it could be anything as small as like top golf together with each other. But like the scale, what you do, I mean, that's like huge scale. And it's kind of funny because um, you've had some photographers from our team there before. And sometimes these companies don't even uh, want photographers there for probably that reason too. People might be laying their hair down even too much, right? Is that what? Right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so sometimes they say, hey, absolutely no photography mm-hmm. at this a- event. And even make a sign non-disclosure mm-hmm. agreements, say that we're not even gonna take cell phone, video or camera. And if any of this is on social media, like the whole sue us and yeah. do all do all these bad things so, so some events are are like that and then others are just kind of a hey like don't don't do anything that you wouldn't want done to yourself kind of that mutual respect yeah. so if you see someone that's super drunk acting acting crazy like don't post a video on that event. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense and it's i mean it's intimate time with the company too mm-hmm. i mean it's it's understandable to respect them and like if they're letting their hair down and having fun like sometimes you don't want that captured for like professional purposes right 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 you don't want you don't want your old college pictures and parties you know posted on the yeah. internet when you're at a big business meeting or you know you're running for mayor and someone posts a picture of you, of you partying with your shirt off and like twirling it around, you know, on top of a bar or something like that. So it, it's kind of just a mutual respect of, hey, this is this is professional, uh, but we're, we're gonna have some fun tonight and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, absolutely, man. So what have you learned, especially being in those professional settings and curating a team around you um, these a lot, like Andrew said, a lot of your team's been with you for a few years now, right? Mm-hmm. Has there been a lot of like great growth moments for not only like you, but your team and like ha- upping your game, perhaps to being in that professional level with these like super high level C-suite executives? Definitely. I mean, it's heightened my, my sense, I guess, of responsibility to take care of our clients and to become a little better of a, a leader. I mean, it, I'm so inspired by every event that we go to and just being able to be around some of the people that uh, we, we get to be with. I mean, it's truly an inspiration on, on what they've been able to accomplish and just the intelligence that they have. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's definitely, I guess, heightened my sense of, of leadership and just inspiring to be more like those people. And hopefully that can transcend to my team and you know they feel a little more responsibility that we get to take care of these these large clients and these these people that are coming to our events and you get to you get to know them you know a little bit as well because you you can talk to pretty much any of them and and be able to converse with them and and see what they've done so it's it's a huge learning opportunity yeah that's that's awesome yeah it's it's cool and i just want to say this cuz you're one of my personal friends you're like your growth over the past four years has truly been so inspirational. Like, Mm. like you're talking about those moments of you going through the kitchen with all this, like all these panels. Like I remember a lot of those times for you. In fact, I've worked a couple events with you in 2019, helping you out. And gosh, it was so much fun doing the Gaylord with you. And man, like seeing like where you were then and seeing you where where you are now is just, it's, it's beautiful thing, man. And like, it's just a true Mm. testament of like your growth as an entrepreneur, as a leader Um, and the people that you inspire. Like we had, uh, Matthew Hallisay on here, and he was talking about how you're inspiration to him. Cut yeah. to that. No, just <laughs> yeah, no that, that's uh, it, it's truly an honor because in the in the moment when you're kind of growing through that growth stages, you don't you don't realize like what you're doing. You're just like this sucks, but I gotta get I gotta push through these moments. I, I mean, when you when you have no money and like you're you're trying to do this thing, it's not fun. Yeah, you know, it it's twenty four seven of just pure agony mm-hmm. honestly i mean because you're you're trying to make it through you're 
investing every dollar that you can back into your company and equipment. So even when you do have a lot of money, you don't because you have to you know, buy all the different carts and different pieces of equipment that you need. And then you're always looking for upgrades and, and things to do different and, and investments to make. So in the moment, you're like, it, it, we're not progressing at, at least fast enough in, in what it seems like. But then you get to those aha moments, like the end of the event where you're just like, we, we did all this stuff. And like three months ago, that wasn't even possible at all. And then you get to that, you get to that moment, that kind of mountain. And then you're like, what, what's the next mountain that mm -hmm. I want to climb? So you're always in this stage. And as I'm kind of growing and developing as an entrepreneur, I, I realize that everybody is in that stage. And it's something that I would encourage anybody that's trying to start a business or has dreams of starting a business that you can do it. And like, we're all in that stage. Even the biggest billionaires, Elon Musk, like he's one of the richest men in the world. He's always looking for mm -hmm. that next thing to go to. So there's, there's something to be said about just enjoying the moments and really being present in that and just, just enjoying the process it's so is, true. is what you're in because there's, there's nothing else to it. There's a famous quote by Ray Kroc. It says, if you're green, you're growing. And if you're ripe, you're rotten. So in other words, saying like yeah. when you're ripe and you think like you get complacent when you're quote unquote successful, you're no longer growing and you're going to find a lot of bad things that happen from it. If you're in a business, mm -hmm. right, you always have to be adapting, pivoting all these different things. And if you're like what are you saying, like if you're, if you're, you have to always grow. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. always say like for business, one of the two main correlations directly tied to success is like your pain tolerance mm -hmm. and like your patience and like most, especially men, like that's really hard for them to yeah. deal with. Um, but it is like pain tolerance is definitely directly correlated because you're right. There's a lot of agony and in a lot of ways, like it doesn't really go away no matter what level mm -hmm. you're at. It just depends on like how you fix it. Cause you know, obviously when you make more money, you can fix your, a lot of your problems with money, but like they say, more money, more problems, right? Mm -hmm. Like what are some of those like current pain thresholds have you pushed through recently in say the past six months? With, with that, it's managing a lot more inventory has been very challenging because when I first started, it was learning, okay, I just, I wanna be the best mobile axe throwing company out there. I wanna be able to build and set up, tear down, you know, less less than two hours max. And so I was like, we, we did it because a lot of events, you only have two hours to set up and a, about an hour to tear down because tear down is a lot faster mm -hmm. but we had to be able to get that setup time in under an hour because we need to be able to if the event is at six we need to be able to get there at four and be set up by five because a mm -hmm. lot of times a client will come in at like 5 15 5 30 inspect everything make sure it, it looks good and then they give the green light like okay we're good to go at six so i, I had to get that under an hour and so going through that was one stage and then I got there and then got a few team leads in place and things were, things were going well. And it's kind of like, okay, what, what's the next level? And so decided from there on the rebrand side was we're going to add a lot more inventory. And so with that comes definitely some problems just with logistics and operations. And there's always, always something breaking and something that needs to be fixed or updated or new products that you need to order. So there's so much more inventory now. That's, mm -hmm. that's one challenge that has been tough the last six months. So, it's just so much inventory. You have another space for it in Denver, right? Yeah. So looking for a warehouse in Denver. Mm -hmm. So the, our listing broker has been a little tough to work with on the new lease, but um, it's it's been you know over overall a good process. So hopefully yes. we'll be in that new location in the next couple months. So we'll see what mm. comes out of it. Leases are always Is that going to speed up the time uh, to set up to I bet, huh? Because you don't have to drive either. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit less on yeah. the setup time because most of our events are Denver metro area. It's about eighty five to ninety percent in Denver area and then about 10% in Colorado Springs as far as business revenue wise. I'd pull an Elon Musk and just sleep on the floor of the warehouse on the roof with the yeah. on the roof. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, certainly an option. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would be down with that besides the roof part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the Apparently roof. he's done that. Like it was like one of the, the, the Tesla warehouses. I think he was sleeping on the roof. 
Which I mean, that makes sense. You know, security. You, no one's gonna fuck with you. You just you just like build a little tent up there, and I it, think so. It's camping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, camping. Yeah, permanent camping. Yeah. <laughs> There's all the craze about camping, you know, Every, everyone loves it. So you can just camp permanently. In your business, you know, mm-hmm. a, a camperpreneur. <laughs> <laughs> well, one cool story about us, like how we met specifically was through my friend Stacy, who does Scorch Earth Haunted Farms. Yeah. And you were like, this is back in 2019 when you're essentially first starting. Yeah, first starting. And you were going to be a vendor at my tiny house festival down at PPIR, Pikes mm-hmm. Peak International Raceway. And I'll never forget because like, for one, you've changed a lot since then, right? Like we always joke because we're close friends. Like I was meeting you at Third Space Coffee. I'm mm-hmm. wearing like jeans, t-shirt. And here you come in, you know, suited, suited and booted coming mm-hmm. in and like, hey, I'm Brian, all this. I'm like, oh man, like. No, he probably said, guy. hey there, kiddo. Yeah, that's hey there, famous kiddo. Saying, <laughs> saying, hey there, kiddo. Yeah. Yep. No, but like it, it's it's interesting to see the evolution of you and who you are and how you're comfortable presenting yourself too. Because mm. I mean, we had James Proby on like dressing nice and like look nice, feel nice, perform great, right? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's been interesting to see like the evolution of you and like how you present yourself as well because you do a lot of this stuff, man. Like you, you are like you've worn all the hats in your business. That's mm-hmm. why you know how to do every facet of your business. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for a leader to do that, right? Like most followers want to see their leader in the trenches. It gives yeah. them a whole level yeah. more of respect for them. Now you're at a level now where you have people who can essentially do most of that for you now. So mm-hmm. how's that evolution been like for you being more of like the delegator as opposed to like the person that's got to do everything? It's It's been very good in the sense of I have a lot more free time and that that's also bad because I have a lot more free time. Sometimes like you don't you don't know what to do. You know you mm-hmm. you, you get done at the end of the day, and I'm I'm so used to just just working, like waking up, working all day, and then going to bed, and then doing it again. So sometimes when you have a team around you, you get into the office, you know, nine or ten, and then the work is done at four or five, and you're like, what what do I do? So it's it's almost that sense of like we're we're going places but also kind of lonely at times Mm -hmm. as well because you get done with work you're like i'm not quite sure what to do do i hang out with friends but then you feel guilty for hanging out with friends because you're not working Mm -hmm. so it's kind of finding that balance so i find that listening to different podcasts such as colorado springs business podcast there we go go. a good one (laughs) listening and subscribe yes like and subscribe (laughs) listening to podcasts you know from Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins, uh, you know, Alex Hermosi, mm-hmm. uh, just amazing guys that have done true leadership and have gone through some of the hardest times. Uh, that's what I love about them is like Marcus said, you got to be in the trenches. You got to be building your, your own website. You got to be, you know, building whatever, whatever business you're in, you have to be doing every facets, cleaning the toilets, you know, building wooden walls, you know, building axe throwing cages, like welding up all the equipment. Like you got to be actively doing everything in the business. And that's what I lo- love about them is, is they don't shy away from the amount of work it takes to build any company. The last company I was at was called, uh, well, it was called Madwire, um, mm-hmm. but they had a really cool core value of like called execution excellence. And it meant like, no matter who you are in the hierarchy, like if there's toilet paper out, you replace the toilet paper. If your mm-hmm. your coworkers out of the office and their phone's ringing, you answer the phone for them. Yeah, and I love that. You know, like I think that that's very valuable. And especially when you're starting a business, you have to wear all those hats. You're right. Mm-hmm. And eventually you get to a certain level where you don't and you delegate. But it's like traveling into new waters. Then there's a new skill to learn. And that's the hardest thing yeah. I think is like making that jump from like the solopreneur versus like the person who becomes an actual like business owner. Yeah. And big difference. There are things to do, but you have to learn them. And it's almost like okay, so like I don't have to do some of the medial work, but now what do I do like to push the business forward? Maybe developing new systems mm-hmm. or you know, overall direction of the company or sale, like whatever it might be, um, there's always things to do, but it's really hard to, like when you're an entrepreneur, it's, it feels isolated because you're like, you know, I feel like I'm like building a process to something that I've never had any experience in building, right? And that's mm-hmm. like what the process is the whole time. You're just yeah. constantly doing new things that you're not qualified to do, but it's just the only way to do it, right? Yeah, for sure. Like when I first started in the corporate field, I wanted to get into finance. So I was studying for the series seven and 65, and there's this whole roadmap 
to success with this company. Mm -hmm. And you you go from this department to customer service, then you're gonna be an an analyst, and then you're gonna go into some marketing and sales training, and then you're gonna be a financial advisor. That takes so much stress off of everything. For (laughs) sure. laid out to you like that. For sure. for me it was that was really cool because you don't have to worry about anything you know like it's all laid out you just you find your map and you just go through the go through whatever they want you to do mm-hmm. and it, it's all laid out and then you're going to be successful you just got to do the actual work you know and yeah you just have to do the actual work and it it's tough work you know don't get me wrong but it's it's laid out mm-hmm. and i realized very quickly that i didn't want it laid all out you know like yeah. i wanted to be the one that was in the trenches doing the hard work and and hopefully that can inspire other people to do their dreams mm-hmm. as well. So I, I think just when you're in that state, it's it's realizing that there is no map to success in business ownership. So, which is kind of comforting as well because you can't mess up that badly. As as long as you're doing the right things, you know, treating people right, mm-hmm. following your own morals, and doing the right thing always. You can't mess up. I mean, even if you do fail, it's a learning lesson either way. You know, like for sure. Uh, do you? Do you you're, it's not the end of the world just because your business is didn't work or something like that. I think you know, yeah. like no, absolutely it's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. The <laughs> most successful people in the world have the most amount of failures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Another direct correlation, right? Like mm-hmm. the more you fail, usually the more you succeed. As long as you're learning from your failures, of course, and not right. making them over and over again. Right. You can't just fail once and then and do you only the exact fail same you thing quit. and fail. Exactly. You only yeah. fail when you quit. <laughs> For sure. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, let's talk about some pain points. We are real close. Everybody in this room is really close friends. We're like mm-hmm. essentially like brothers, including Edgar yeah. behind the camera. He doesn't. Yep. He's like behind the camera. He's there too. <laughs> Uh, amazing videographer by the way yeah mm-hmm. incredible and we're like you know we're all on our own entrepreneurial journey yeah. um and like like i said we're close we're like brothers and like i can say from like the two of you you guys have been there through some very hard times for me i recently lost my dog very hard time he went slowly yeah. paralyzed and like i had to carry him up and down from my third floor uh condo yeah. yeah and like you guys stepped in and like helped me with that process which i can't thank you guys enough for that um, and not only that, like you were there for my grandfather's funeral, which was, I, I did the eulogy for that. Yeah. And like, you were there for me for that. And, um, I know you had a loss about a year and a half ago with your mother. How have you been? How's your heart? And then how are you like today? So how has that process been? And then how are you today? Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm still, still going through it for sure like getting a little choked up just thinking about it. But I think when you go through a loss, you know, that means so much to you, you, you gain a deeper appreciation for, you know, what you had and then what you have as well. Mm -hmm. So like everything that my mom did for me, like it was for a reason. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's so many times that I think back of, you know, the, the days that we were swimming or the, the days that, um, you know, we spent at the pool and just how much of that correlates to my life now, Totally. um, like creating different experiences for our clients and how, how much I, I relate back to those moments when I was five, six, seven years old that, you know, my mom was like everything to me, mm-hmm. like how much of, of that is actually impacted, um, in my current business. Like it, it's really cool. And then another stance that you have is you're grateful for what you have like like Marcus and Andrew and Edgar and just everybody around me I'm, I'm just so thankful for them and I, I think those those moments are, are really special because you remember the times that that you had with your loved ones but then you can also cherish those memories and like carry on the legacy that they wanted for you like your your grandpa would be so proud of you for everything that that you're doing now and and just everything that he trained you up as as a from a little boy all the way up and like how you handled the passing of of your lifelong companion dj and and your dog and just going through that loss i think it's very important to cherish those memories and just be able to carry on that legacy and appreciate those around you yeah we're not we're not an island there's no Mm self-made millionaire i don't ever believe that ever definitely Um, not we all have our support systems and one of my favorite stories that you've told me about your mom, which I can relate to in so many different levels, is like you just like using her as a sounding board for like 
a problem that you have in business and mm-hmm. like she didn't even necessarily have an answer to you, for you but she listened to you and I think that's so beautiful because it's like it's so true like there's been instances where I've been that for somebody I'm like I have no idea what the answer is to help them but I just listen and it's, it's so cool to see the other side of that like mm-hmm. that still helps the person because they're still venting and it's so yeah. important to have and like this is where it's so important especially for our viewers who are just starting it is possible like to keep going it is possible to persevere through so much hardship mm-hmm. and you can use it for fuel to make you a better entrepreneur better person better father son whatever it might be you know mm-hmm. friend and i feel like you have done that and i know it was a rut for you for a while and i know you're still processing it because it's yeah. such a huge loss for you but i just let you want to let you know like you have a huge support system who root for you who's always in your mm-hmm. corner and like any of our viewers out there they do too like whether they see it or not, there's someone there that has their back and is yeah. going to support them. And you know what true friends are when they, sp- how they speak about you behind your back, you know? Yeah. And, and like, I know we, we, we love and rave about you, you know, we kid around, we're all <laughs> friends and talk about like mm-hmm. our little like nuances of what we do, but like we do really, we really do care about you, man. And yeah, I'm so that. proud of you. And like, again, if you ever need anybody, like you have Andrew and myself, mm-hmm. like we're always here for you and we understand. So I wanted to put that out there and like, that's an inspiration, like what you're talking about with your mom. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, like you said, there's no self-made millionaire. I mean, there's people that claim that they did it on their own, but that when you start a business, you're working for every single person that comes in contact with your business. Like you actually become probably the lowest person Mm -hmm. in the company. I mean, because you're you're working for your employees. You, you're always trying to make sure that they're taken care of and that they understand what they're what they're doing, um, how they need to get things done. You're working for your customers and your your clients because if they're not happy with your service, they're not going to hire you again. And then you're also working for you know the the public and and gaining their trust that okay, this person is a trustworthy person. They're running their business the right way and they they want to accomplish these goals and I would love to get behind them and support them. So like I wouldn't have made it if it weren't for family and friends, you know, sharing our posts on Facebook about what I was doing, starting this, the, the mm-hmm. first mobile axe throwing company in Colorado. Like no one, no one had ever heard of that, but then they'd go and experience it and share it on Facebook and give us a Google review. And so all of that just compounds on itself. So I think it's very important to realize that when you start a business, you're working. You're now working for everybody, instead of just working for one boss or one company. You're you're working for everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's, when you were saying that it reminded me of uh, something that I was just about to say, and now I'm stalling so I can think of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I'll I'll let the conversation continue. Do you have something to add? <laughs> No, I think it's, I think it's true. You got to wear a lot of hats. It's, yeah. it's, there's no other way to it. Um, anybody who's interested in entrepreneurship, um, <laughs> I have a piece of advice that's kind of sad, but it's morbid, but it's true. Uh, if I wouldn't, my younger self, if I would have known how hard it would have been, I probably would not have gotten started. <laughs> right. So I always <laughs> so say I had yeah. ignorance on fire and that does a yeah. lot for a young person. Um, I'm so glad I did it. No regrets. Oh, yeah. Um, but no matter how hard you might think it is, it's probably the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. So you can't imagine it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's why it's so important to have a good network of close entrepreneur friends because mm-hmm. man, it can be isolating, man. It can be lonely, man. It could be the most challenging thing you've ever done in your entire life. Um, so you need that, you know? Yeah. And I feel like you're a good, you're a good representation of like what it takes. And like, we're talking about pain tolerance. I mean, there's no other, I mean, losing someone's probably the worst pain you can go through. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm just so proud of you, man. What's, um, what's next for Ignite experiences? Yeah, I think it's just adding more inventory. Our DIY department uh, is definitely taken off mm-hmm. uh, pretty well. So just d- different do it yourself activities that clients can participate in during the event. So our one activity that's popular is wood burning. So we have a bunch of different machines and then stencils that you can choose from. And then you'd go and do a a tracing step with a stencil and then outline with the actual wood burning machine and then finish with some final color. So it's kind of like PE or, you know, for adults. And they're just short three to five minute takeaway projects that you can do with your employees that are just fun and kind of create those event memories so more more diy experiences 
and then just continuing our, our mission on making better memories and investing in experiences rather than just simple items. Just want to continue that forward and, and keep it spanning as much as we can. If, if that means multi-state, uh, so be it. Or if we're just serving Colorado, I'm definitely happy with that as well. Love it. Real quick, what's up with this dang Lego wall that you have? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Lego wall. Yeah. So that came, a lot of the inspiration came from my brother-in-law, actually. So nice. my sister and <clears throat> Steven just got married in September, and he's obsessed with Legos. <laughs> and they actually have an entire room that's nice. about 14 feet by 14 <laughs> feet, just full of Legos. He loves building them. And <clears throat> I was over at their house one day and just got inspired to do something Lego related because I built a ton of Legos when I was mm-hmm. probably under 12 and kind of brought the, back those Don't childhood lie, 22, memories. Under 22, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're an adult doing Legos. We're yeah, all, we're you, all a- yeah. you absolutely can. And, and I just thought like, it'd be really fun if we integrated Legos into a, a corporate event, but make it professional, make it something that's memorable. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of came up with this I- concept of a Lego wall where you build your logo or event saying a lot of different conferences will have words like you know empowered or, or or something like that that they want their clients and their guests to remember once the conference is over because over 90 percent of everything that's said at conferences is forgotten as soon as it's over which is really sad because you spend all this money getting everybody together you have these wonderful speeches you you bring in you know speakers like gary vaynerchuk or whoever you're bringing in to speak and then everything's forgotten so our goal is to make sure that it's remembered. And so with the Lego wall, it's, it's the same, same concept as any of our activities, but you get to build your logo onto this wall that can be up to 12 feet wide by six and a half feet tall. And it doesn't look like Legos when you first walk up to it. It just looks like a logo that was designed specifically for them. But then the client actually gets to build it, it takes about 30 minutes to build, and then it sits there for the rem- remainder of the conference. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's been a ton of fun to bring out. That's awesome, man. What advice do you have for someone who's looking to start in your industry to help them get started? Just start. Like, literally find somebody to pitch your idea to and get into an event, however you can. So for me, that was a local festival in Loveland. I just, I had to, I had to throw axes. That was, that was just my thing. Like I wanted to try it out. I wanted to throw axes and, and see how it worked. And then, it, and then it worked. I made some money, made a, a ton of friends and some new memories. I was like, let's just keep this thing going. And so whatever your idea or concept is, literally just today, do something about it. Because I, I see so many people that will have this idea for two, three, four years, and they don't actually pursue any of it. And it doesn't matter what your friends say or family say, just just pick up the phone, call whoever you need and get into one event and see how it goes. Yeah, sometimes that hardest step is the first step, right? Definitely. Yeah. It's that first step into the unknown. You know, you, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's promised. You're not promised another paycheck or, or whatever you need to survive. So it can be scary. You know, you, it's... It's the land of the unknowns, and you gotta charter the waters. Mm-hmm. It's so funny too, because I am, as you guys know, like I am not a handyman whatsoever, <laughs> and you weren't as handy either, right? Before starting this business too. No, not really. I mean, I played a lot of video games in in high school and in college, and I was going to school for finance. Like I had no desire to really build anything. So the only building experience that I had was when I was eight, nine, ten years old, just building some, you know, shelving at, for my own bedroom. And that, that's it. Like wow, I, I didn't have any construction experience. And that was one of the hardest parts was learning the basics of construction. I, I didn't realize mm-hmm. that the tradesmen are actually pretty smart. <laughs> you know, they can use a tape measure and, and they know what square and plumb is on building and they just know how to put things together. And I definitely didn't. So that that's was one of the wild. biggest I've known you as that guy, mm-hmm. uh, as the construction handyman guy. I didn't know that you weren't into it. You went from nerd <laughs> to badass <laughs> i like it i appreciate how you, you put it that way <laughs> he's a nerdy badass now that's yeah, cool yeah, that's nerdy cool badass now. Yeah. Yeah. i'm a nerd myself so i can say that yeah we all are actually <laughs> in our own yeah. ways yeah so i mean it was just it was just a ton of failures really mm-hmm. like trying something 
you know putting putting a nail in this this area and just seeing how it looks and then it all falls over and crashes and you're like well don't don't do that again so just <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, that when you're building like big structures, though, you can't make those kinds of mistakes, though. Like like your axe throwing cages, you yeah. Got to make sure those are good first. But you you probably built up the steps to get to that. I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm just a, a ton of time in the the warehouse and storage units of of putting things together, having it fall and crash and burn on you, and then you mm-hmm. redo the drawing board. You draw up something, and then you're like, okay, this this is gonna work. And then you get re- get rid of the failures and keep what's it is successful Mm -hmm. and you just come up with uh, what what can be successful and and keep that now you got a really a really strong like so well put together like Mm -hmm. you could probably sell that model how you've how you've put together the cages you could probably like put a pdf together and sell it patent that right yeah or Mm -hmm. patent it yeah (laughs) for sure yeah i I actually tried i tried to patent it and when i was talking with the attorneys it, it was just it was too similar to a dog cage actually because they on patent law they whatever is similar to that it doesn't matter the scale it could be tiny or are very large but they there has and, to be a percentage difference between yeah, similarity there has to be a yeah. percentage difference and so that they said this is way too similar to the a patent of a of a dog cage and so they they wouldn't <laughs> pursue it so i, I I'm gonna fire those lawyers. <laughs> Go add, hire Chat GPT. <laughs> you gotta add right. on your LinkedIn professional dog cage builder. You have to do it now. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting because it. I think, yeah, it's still different though because there's a big gap open in the front. I, yeah. I feel like and, and there's wood in the back. Like I still I feel like there's a big difference there. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's you might want to get a second opinion. <laughs> but if it's not worth it, it's that. not worth it. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's not your business to to sell these cages your business is mm-hmm. to, to sell experiences so, yeah so i mean it all on like business this is the thing about business we mm-hmm. talked about it last time like there's so many opportunities everywhere it's you can get distracted with everything yeah and i've learned with my business i need to 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 batten down the hatches and really focus on a specific yeah. type of thing and not do everything although i still am kind of in the moment doing a little bit of everything mm-hmm. but i'm slowly over the next like few months i'm going to be just siphoning down to one specific type of a product with three different tiers yeah but i'll talk about awesome. that later i haven't announced that yeah later. i can't wait to hear about that but i like, kind of going off of that i think it's very important to try different things and and just do them as hobbies yeah yeah and kind of expand your your knowledge base and that's that's one thing that i've kind of gotten into a little bit more is just like activities like like yoga like rock climbing and and things that kind of heighten your your sense of awareness and and things that are going on in the world i think it's very important to explore new interests and and to always do those things because you never know in business when something that you learned five ten years ago Mm -hmm. will come back and then you can create this amazing product and steve jobs was actually talking about that the the first macintosh Mm -hmm. computer he took a calligraphy class yeah and so he actually invented how to properly space the keys out Mm-hmm. And then Windows copied them a year later, and they have the exact same. It's format. what they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what my, that's Microsoft's mo right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we copy everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's going after that, so it's just always expanding your knowledge base is very important, mm-hmm. especially as a business owner, because you're always learning new things, and then you can implement them in the business, and they might be very successful, and it could be a multi-million dollar company that it turns into. That's how I have to thrive. I have to be trying a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. So many things that I've learned over the last f- five years have applied to, and just evolved my skills to allow me to do more things. And it's like being in the trenches in a lot of things. Like mm-hmm. as I develop these products, I know how to do them too, you know, because I made them. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I just have to like try different things. There's like no choice for me. I have to be, I thrive in chaos. <laughs> I think it's, it's good to have your, your creative outlets too. Mm-hmm. Like I, as you guys know, I just started photography. I've always had an eye for photography, but I've actually yeah. invested, you know, in actual photography equipment, like expensive equipment. Yeah. It's it's important to have that outlet too, mm-hmm. and like exercise, like all those things really help for your overall well being to be in a well rounded person. And I think you need that too, especially when you're so dialed in, focused on like succeeding in one facet of your life. You have to mm-hmm. have those other outlets for yourself. When you say, oh, absolutely, the creative outlets. I, I think it's great to keep your mind at ease and then you then you get to meet new people which could be future business partners or clients or totally. you know people that you work with or learn from so i think it's very important to have those creative outlets and professional outlets where you 
kind of dive into different things where you have no interest in creating a business out of this or things that are more on the professional scale where it's, mm -hmm. it, this could be a business, but I just want to learn first and then see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Beer making has been a hobby that I'm doing with that. That's has awesome. No, no, I like, I have no plans for making it a business. Maybe one day I will, but that's not my goal. My goal is to just like as a hobby and for fun and to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we are about to close in time right now. So I think this has been a great episode. We always enjoy you having on the show uh, and having you on the show. I sometimes I think say things backwards. I also <laughs> read them backwards. I think it's dyslexia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I also talk backwards too, like Yoda. I think he was dyslexic. Uh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Yoda is dyslexic. Not a lot of people talk about that. We that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this has been uh, the COS Business Podcast. And uh, anything you guys like to add to, to finish, wrap it up? Where can we find you? At igniteexperiences.com. Also on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, mostly all social media. And then Brian Ross Manith on all social media as well. Nice. Sweet. Well, we'll see you guys on the next one.